So welcome to the Dr. Gundry podcast. You know, most of us know someone who has suffered from cancer, whether it's a parent, a sibling, a spouse, or a friend. Maybe you've been fighting your own fight and battle against cancer. Well, what if there was something you could do about it? Uh, foods that you could prepare to help ward off dangerous cancers. So on today's episode, I'll be chatting with Liana Werner Gray, best-selling author of The Earth Diet and 10-Minute Recipes. And her brand new book is called Cancer Free with Food and how the right foods can reduce your cancer risk. But I also want to talk uh, about if you've got cancer, how the right foods can really make a difference. So you're going to learn about Liana's health journey, which foods to eat and which to avoid because this is the Dr. Gundry podcast after all, and how you and your loved ones can start living healthier, cancer-free lives today. So Liana, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Gundry. Well, we're so happy to have you here. Now, when you were 21 years old, uh, last year, I assume. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you, dis you discovered you had a golf ball sized lump in your neck. So tell me about that. And then I want you as a segue, tell me what you thought caused that and what your medical journey was. So I grew up in Alice Springs, Outback Australia, with a very indigenous rich culture. So from age five, we were taught that the healthiest way for us to eat was to go out to our own backyard and to pull foods straight from the trees or the bush because those were the most nutritious. So that was planted in my brain from an, a young age. Now, when I left Alice Springs to go to Brisbane to go to university, I was living on my own and to my own devices. So I started to indulge in junk foods and fast foods and processed foods really for the first time. And I became very quickly addicted to it. And I knew it was wrong and I knew I was depriving my body of nutrition every single day. And so I started to notice all these health issues started to happen, but I, I ignored them because the impulse to eat sugar and fast foods was much stronger at the time. So after five years of eating like that every single day and eating copious amounts of junk food, I mean, I would eat gummy bears for breakfast, I would eat pizza for lunch, KFC for dinner, McDonald's. Listeners, cover your ears, please. <laughs> yeah, oh. It's awful. Yeah. <laughs> so then when I was 21, I ended up in hospital with the lump in my throat, which at first I just thought was a swollen gland. So I ignored it. And after two weeks, it got bigger, it got worse. So my naturopath said, you need to go to the hospital and get this checked. So they did a biopsy. And when the results came back and they said, look, you have a 3.7 centimeter mass tumor in your lymphatic system. I went and researched what the lymphatic system was. And I learned that it's basically the body's sewage system. And so I was like, wow, that makes sense. I put way too many toxins into my body that my body backfired and was like, you can't keep eating like this. So I knew that it was diet related. Also, my gut told me this is diet related. So that's when I started my healing journey and I wanted to get healthy once and for all. Okay, so people who are listening or watching are gonna say, okay, you had a lump in your neck. It was probably just a swollen gland. You actually have a biopsy that said it was a lymphoma. Yes, is that uh, correct? I have a biopsy on my website that shows that I have a 3.7 centimeter tumor in, on the right side of my neck. And I actually went and got three different diagnoses ah. from different doctors. And they all said different things. One said I had stage one cancer, one said I had stage zero cancer, one said I had precancerous. And so at that point, I... I gathered some information about the medical industry at the time and thought this seems like like hocus pocus woo wah and they, also they offered me a cervical cancer vaccination at the time and I was like well, how is this related <laughs> so th that to me was enough for me to say you know what like I'm going to opt out of this and it wasn't stage four cancer. They weren't saying, you need to go for chemo next week, you need to go for surgery next week. They were saying, look, we can do surgery and we can remove it if you want. And they've done surgery for a lot smaller lumps yeah, for sure. sure. I also don't want to take away from people who have had stage four cancer or advanced cancer. Mine was very early and I was able to catch that very early. 
but it was enough for me to say, you know what, I, I don't want to just remove it. And that's something that the indigenous people also taught me was that if we have a sickness or like a tumor or a lump in our body, obviously tumors aren't meant to be anywhere in our body. So they said, if you just go and you do medical and you cut it out, that doesn't necessarily address the root cause. And I wanted to address the root cause once and for all because I knew I had to stop eating like that. So that's when I said, you know what, I'm going to go and actually get healthy once and for all and go back to my roots, go back to nature. So I went and found a medical doctor who was helping people with vitamin C injections and helping people heal cancer naturally. And then I worked with a naturopath and I started juicing six times a day. So I drank six vegetable juices a day. And then every time I had a craving for junk food, I thought, okay, how can I fulfill this craving in the most natural way possible? So I got into the kitchen and I started making recipes. Ah, okay. And that's where these recipes evolved from, was like, okay, I'm craving chicken nuggets, I'm craving chocolate, I'm craving candy, I'm craving pancakes, waffles, whatever it was, I found a recipe that would nourish my body instead of poison it and make it worse. Now, were you, were you brought up in a family that cooked? Yes, yeah, so my father is a chef and my ah, mom okay. my mom's also a really good cook. Yes. And I hadn't cooked before that. I was, you know, eating processed food for so many years. So when I got into the kitchen, I was amazed when I started putting ingredients together, just simple ingredients like to make a cookie dough. You know, like tiger nut flour or almond flour and some monk fruit sweetener now that I use. My recipes have evolved since then. They've become a lot healthier. So I was surprised when I was making these foods. I was like, wow, this is, I can eat this chocolate brownie every single day and get magnesium from it and protein and it tastes good. And that was helping me not crave the bad stuff. Gotcha. So they didn't, they didn't want to necessarily say, well, you have to have chemotherapy or you have to have radiation therapy or you have to have this cut out. Uh, is, I mean, did they propose any of those things to you? They weren't aggressive with Good. me at all. Good. Um, and also this was in Australia 10 years ago. I think Australia at that time was not as aggressive, but five years after that, my mom was diagnosed with advanced breast cancer in both her breasts. Mm. And they were very aggressive with her and said, you need to do surgery and chemo and radiation. And so, my, you know, I sat down with my mom and said, what do you feel like you need to do for your healing? What, what do you think will, you know, is the most empowering choice for you. And my mom said, honestly, I do want to do surgery because I feel like that cut it all out. I'll start fresh. Then I won't have the cancer anymore. But she said, I just honestly can't do chemo radiation. I feel like if I do that, I'll put my body under too much pressure and stress and that will make my situation worse. So, and then she also did a nutritional plan. So she started juicing as well, getting all that nutrition into her, lots of vitamin C. She also took vitamin D supplements as well. And that for the next six months after that, doctors kept calling her, pressuring her, like, it's going to come back if you don't do chemo radiation. And my mom would call me in fear and be like, what should I do? And I said, well, what, you know, what do you feel? And she's like, I can't do it. So she never did it. And she's cancer free to this day. That's a fantastic story. So um, you started doing all this. You changed your food. You fought the junk food temptations. When did you start noticing something changing? It took about a month for the tumor to let lose its, its, it felt very swollen and very hard. So it took about a month for me to feel like it was starting to dissolve. After three months, it was completely dissolved. Fantastic. But I made a lot of radical changes. Yeah. yeah. And you've kind of, now have you, it's one thing to have, you know, a, a lump in your neck that you can see to, uh, empower you to make radical changes, particularly when you're really young. What kind of keeps you on track now that that thing's not there anymore? <laughs> <laughs> well, I suffered every single day for five years eating junk food, even though I felt like that high for five or 10 minutes, eating all the sugar and the fast food. After that, I would crash and was absolutely miserable. So that was enough suffering to me. And I just remember like saying, God, if you can heal me from this addiction and these cravings and this tumor, like I'll be happy and grateful every single day of my life, I promise. And so I've not wanted to go, not wanted to go back to that at all. But also there's no desire or impulse in me at all. When I see these foods, to me, they just look dead and there's no appeal. 
So I'm more excited about making these kinds of foods instead. I'm excited about making like a healthy cookie dough or healthy chicken tenders. All right. So your initial experience resulted in the Earth Diet, right? Yes. And so uh, how, how is this new book, you know, the cancer free with food, different than the Earth Diet? Well, the Earth Diet started because I needed something at the time to hold me accountable to sticking to me only eating natural foods. And at the time it started as a blog for 365 days. I said, I'm only going to eat foods that come straight from the earth as wholesome as possible for one year. And I want you, the world, my readers to hold me accountable. So after the blog, then my readers were like, put this into a book. Can you put all of these recipes into a book? And I thought, ah, that's a great idea. So Hay House published my first earth diet book and then after that, I wanted to make it more specific for people with cancer or people that have cancer in their family like myself. My, both of my grandfathers also passed away from cancer. And so for people that are predisposed to it, I wanted to say, here are some research that show which foods help us to reduce our risk of ever getting cancer. And if you have cancer, here are some foods that have been proven to shrink tumors and kill cancer cells. So I wanted to do research just for that. And um, yeah, I, I love the, the cancer community and love helping people with cancer because it's a, it's a terrible disease and a terrible feeling and I've been there and it feels like absolute rock bottom. It feels like hell, literally. So I, you know, I wanna help people that are in that, in that situation. So when you did the Earth Diet and you did this year long journey, did you didn't have to move back to the outback and eat <laughs> eat native plants? I mean, you were doing this from from Brisbane, right? Exactly, the big yeah. city. Right. I wanted to find a way to make the natural indigenous lifestyle fit into our very fast-paced, busy, modern lifestyle. Yeah. And can you do it? Obviously, you can. Yes. And you're going to teach us some of those things. So the new book is uh, you know cancer free with food. So what are the most toxic foods that everyone should avoid? The most obvious one is sugar, white sugar and corn syrup. The body just doesn't know how to break that down. It's just way too much toxicity for the lymphatic system and the liver and the whole body. So that one's obvious one. Also a lot of preservatives like fillers, additives. I found a lot of research on those that have proven that those create toxins in the body, carcinogens, which lead to cancer. So obviously avoiding anything genetically engineered and, and then also even microwave foods because that's considered a form of radiation. So I thought that was fascinating. And then also I found some studies that were linked to foods that have been sprayed with pesticides. So fruits and vegetables sprayed with pesticides is incredibly toxic and does increase your chances of getting cancer. And some people say, well, that sucks. I just want to be able to go to the supermarket and buy a fruit and vegetable. I know. So do I, but if we're in this country, you know, in America, we have to buy organic produce or grow it ourselves because we are at risk of getting a lot of pesticide exposure. And then also farmed seafood was really toxic. I was surprised about how toxic farmed seafood was. I didn't think it could be that awful. It's really bad. And uh, it, as you know, in all my books, I say, please, 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 you know, only wild caught fish. And we're beginning to see actually tricks. Uh, I saw on a restaurant menu actually this past week that they were advertising ocean raised seafood. <laughs> What's that? And yeah, it, well, it's that. That's called farmed, you know, seafood. But it sounds so much more, you know, you know, wild ocean raised. And there was the word raised. Um, caught my attention and everybody says, oh, but it's, you know, ocean, it's wild. No, it's not. Yeah. Uh, you know. They're smart with their marketing. That's something people need to be cautious of is the packet might look natural or, or like say ocean raised fish, but it's just marketing. Yep. Yeah. Very true. Okay. So a lot of my listeners know that I've been talking about the importance of vitamin D and off camera, we were talking about that. So what are your recommendations for people in terms of vitamin D? 
Well, I recommend getting blood work every 12 to 24 months and just checking your vitamin D levels. And if they're down, take supplements, but also go out and get sunshine and don't be afraid of the sun. I also did a lot of research on skin cancer and there are legit studies that say that more cancer is caused from skin cancer and the carcinogens in from skin cancer, su sorry, sunscreen and how toxic sunscreen is versus the sun. Very true. Yeah, there, there's, uh, that's part of my seven deadly disruptors and sunscreen is right up there on carcinogens. And it's interesting, uh, the University of California, San Diego, just kind of you know, down the road from here, uh, published a number of papers on the effect of vitamin D in cancer. And they've found that most people with cancer have low vitamin D levels. And there's a very strong association, in their opinion, between low vitamin D and the development of cancer. And I've certainly seen that in, in my practice. Mm -hmm. In fact, shockingly, they think the average American should take 9,600 international units of vitamin D3 a day to have an adequate level. And in their published research, they have never seen vitamin D toxicity at up to 40,000 international units a day um, routinely. So I think there's this huge fear, particularly among practicing healthcare professionals, that vitamin D toxicity is, you know, oh, it's horrible. And I see a number of my cancer patients who I run their vitamin Ds, 100, 120 nanograms per milliliter, and their oncologists say, you're vitamin D toxic and get that down. And I, next time I see them, their vitamin D level is like 40. And I go, you know, what happened? I said, oh, my oncologist said I'm killing myself with vitamin D. And I said, well, that's funny, you know, uh, the data shows it just the opposite. Yeah, it's because they're trained in such old school things, same as nutritionists. It's all right. old school. We're still trained that we should be promoting corn and grains, and that's awful. Look at the health stats. So I personally take vitamin D supplements myself, and it's also something free that we can get straight from the sunshine, which I talk about in my book also. I talk about here's some free like natural treatments that you can do if you have cancer or want to prevent cancer and getting sunshine is one of them. Yeah, absolutely. All right, now for some controversy. Oh. <laughs> you know, I, I tell my patients and readers to avoid foods mm -hmm. like quinoa and whole tomatoes <laughs> and that you have to detoxify the quinoa with a pressure cooker or you have to get rid of the lectins and tomatoes by peeling and deseeding them. I actually like tomato sauce that comes from peeled and deseeded tomatoes. And we actually have some recipes for that. But you recommend both of these things in your new book. You know, how <laughs> I come? <do>. So, <laughs> okay, disclaimer, all the foods in this book, even though they might be anti-cancer, they have to be for the right person. Same as mushrooms. Mushrooms are great, but not for every person. Personally, I can't eat a lot of mushrooms. They just, my body just doesn't like them that well, even though they're super healthy, natural food. So with tomatoes, the research I found with them is mostly because of their lycopene. Those studies showed that that helps, especially with prostate cancer and other cancers. So for some, tomatoes work well, but also for others, it might cause inflammation. And then some people's doctors are telling them to stay away from nightshades. Um, but the studies I found, I, I felt like tomatoes were really helpful in preventative and for healing cancer, so I included that. And then quinoa, there's a lot of studies that trace back to ancient civilizations that use quinoa as their fuel source. And that's something that they would eat to keep them energized for days. And it, quinoa, it depends on where someone's at with their grains. So I wouldn't say to someone who's completely cut all grains, like go and add a grain into your diet. But for someone who eats a lot of breads or a lot of other processed grains, I would say try quinoa and fill up on that instead to help you cross that bridge so that you're not craving the worst types of grains. Yeah, I, you know, part of what I've done throughout my life is to study indigenous cultures and ancient cultures to figure out how they actually detoxified what appeared to me as a very toxic grain, for instance. And most people don't know, and I write about this, that the Incas actually had three detoxification processes before they would eat quinoa. Oh, wow. They soaked it for 48 hours, then they allowed it to ferment, they let it rot, and then they cooked it. Oh, and, wow. 
Oh. It's not on the package direction. See, not a lot of people know this. Where, that's I didn't know why, this. Yeah, that's why I write about this. This is awesome. For instance, share. last yeah. fall I went to Sicily because Sicily is a heavily based tomato culture. Almost everything is tomato sauce based. And so I would go and interview chefs, and even in small villages. And I said, you know, what do you think? Why do you guys eat so many tomatoes and how do you fix them? And the, everyone said, well, you, everyone knows you have to peel and de-seed tomatoes before you can make sauce. And I said, well, how do you know that? They, they said, well, because, you know, my mother taught me. And well, how does she know? Because, you know, my grandmother taught her. And I could not find a chef in Sicily that didn't tell me you had to peel and de-seed tomatoes before you could use them. Wow. And in fact, I was lecturing in Toronto a couple weeks ago, getting interviewed by a reporter. And the reporter, I was talking, we were talking about tomatoes. And the reporter said, well, you know, I love it, the fact that you say you have to peel and de-seed tomatoes, because everyone in Canada knows that the seed in a tomato is very acidic and toxic, and you have to get rid of it. And she said, everyone knows that. And so you start looking at cultures and say, isn't that interesting? In fact, the Italians didn't eat tomatoes for 200 years after Columbus brought them back their native son, because they knew how toxic they were. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah. Well, and also what I learned from the aboriginals is that you don't eat the seeds in any fruits or vegetables, because if you do that, basically, there you're won't screwed. Be any. You won't have any more food. They had to eat the food and keep the seeds and replant them, because they couldn't just go to the supermarket and buy seeds that didn't exist. So that was a way of keeping that cycle going. So it totally makes sense to me to remove seeds from all fruits and vegetables, because we weren't designed to eat them. It's just no. not the design of nature or the human body. No, it's true. You know, when I, I was doing mission work in Brazil years ago as a surgeon, and uh, cashews uh, started in South America, and the aboriginal South Americans would actually take the cashew nut off and throw it away because it was toxic, and they'd eat the fruit. And uh, oh, wow. so, you know, whenever <laughs> they, you'd see the entire thing on your plate, they'd they'd give it to you, and they they go, "Don't touch that. You know, that's that's lethal. Wow. Just eat the fruit." Wow. Yeah. So, does this mean you might be coming to Alice Springs sometime soon? Well, I, I would country? love to come out there because <laughs> I have not studied that uh, that culture. Oh, but, that'd be uh, awesome! Uh, well, I'm your girl. I can yeah. introduce you to them. All right, <laughs> very good. Dr. Gundry goes to the outback. That's right. Oh, that would be fun. Yeah. I'm going to be looking out for you in the outback, folks. Okay. Uh, okay. I always ask my guests, uh, because of my new book, The Longevity Paradox, what's the one thing listeners can do today to help them live a longer, healthier life? Drink chlorophyll every single day. So that's my number one tip for everyone always. And that's something that I've continued to do now every single day for the last decade after I healed. I thought, why not consume chlorophyll every day? It just makes me feel so alive, so energized. It helps purify the blood, helps put oxygen into the blood. And chlorophyll could be the form of eating a big green salad, leafy greens, or a smoothie, or a juice, or even chlorophyll droppers, or a greens powder, which I use also that has, it's a dried broccoli sprouts, collard greens, kale, spirulina, and I just mix that into water. Okay. But make sure, editorial note, that your greens powder doesn't have wheat grass or barley grass. Evil <laughs> stuff. Okay, so what are your top three cancer-fighting foods? You brought us some. And for those of you who are listening to the podcast, we're going to try our best to describe them for you and to make munching noises that aren't too <laughs> gross. Uh, okay, so what do you got? Okay, so... I made a few different dishes today. So do you want to start with the dessert? <laughs> I always go straight for the dessert. <laughs> Life's too short, eat dessert <laughs> yeah, first. Always. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I made two different desserts. So first of all, these are chocolate coconut cups. So this is a great replacement for if someone's craving the Reese's or chocolate peanut butter cups. So this is something I also ate a lot of during my healing. Ah, yeah. Okay. So it's made with real cacao powder, real cacao yeah. butter, and also some coconut mana inside. So that makes it nice and creamy. And then when you bite into it, you get that coconut mana buttery inside. And it's sweetened with monk fruit. 
so this would be kind of like, a, you know, Easter was a little bit ago. Uh, this, would, this could be a Cadbury egg replacement. Totally, yes. Oh. But also, would you like to try one? Yeah. yeah. So one of the studies I found is that cacao is actually does have anti-tumor activities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's a functional food, which I was so happy about. And so would all you chocolate lovers be happy to hear that it's a chocolate is medicine. Oh, gosh, yes. <laughs> it has huge amounts of polyphenols. And, you know, particularly in, in, my, in my cancer practice, and I have a big cancer practice, uh, chapter 10 of the Plant Paradox is the cancer program. Um, we want everyone in ketosis. And so uh, coconut has MCT oil, which mm -hmm. will get you into ketosis pretty easily. But yeah, that's, that's delicious. You like it? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna put there that down. Okay. okay. So then I use these to, for the chocolate chunks in the cookie dough recipe. Ah, okay. Now the cookie dough recipe, instead of using flour, is made with tiger nut flour, which I know that you're a big fan big of. Big fan <laughs> of. I've actually been writing about it for years and we have it in our recipes and people go, tiger nuts, what the heck are those? Yeah, people are, are they a nut? Well, no, they're a root vegetable. Correct. Same amount of iron as red meat. So these are excellent. You're getting a lot of iron from eating cookies. Wow. <laughs> Yay, so tiger nut flour sweetened with monk fruit as well. I put a bit of sea salt in there. Now it almost looks like you have two kinds. Yeah, so I rolled these ones in cacao powder. Ah, okay. So I just love that richness of the cacao powder and then bite into it and you get that soft, moist, sweet cookie dough inside. And then with the chocolate coconut chunks, delish. Now, these, so these are raw. These are raw, no bake. And these are a legit five minute recipe. Now, wow. you just throw everything into a bowl and it's done. Now, you can bake them for seven minutes in the oven. Ah, okay. If you want a hot melt in your mouth <coughs> chocolate chip cookie. Mm. So this is actually okay for me? This is a great replacement, a great upgrade, actually nutrient rich cookie dough. So you're a junk food addict that created her own junk food uh, so that you can, you know. Junk just... food gone healthy. <laughs> well, I, and I think that's what we have to do. Uh, one of my very good friends, uh, Jimmy Schmidt, who's won three James Beard Award, saying, there is no way we are going to stop people from eating the textures and flavors that they crave. Exactly. And we basically have to convince them that they can get all those flavors and textures using things that will make them healthy. Yes, yeah. and that's what I aimed for my books to do because I came from that place of being a junk food addict and now being a health and nutrition coach for the past decade. If you tell someone who's addicted, like you can never eat this again, you can never have cookies, chocolate bread, they're like, okay, bye, see ya. You know, that's exactly right. You know, in all, all of our books and uh, the new one, the Plant Paradox Family Cookbook will be out this fall. Very what exciting. we strive to do is, because a kid wants a chicken McNugget. Chicken tender, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so help me with this. How, how are okay. we going to do that? So, this is organic chicken. Very important that meat has to be organic. I coated this in macadamia nut milk, but people could also coat it in pasture raised eggs as well. And then the coating is tiger nut flour with turmeric and some black pepper and some sea salt. And then you can bake them or fry them. But guess what olive oil I fried these in, Dr. Gundry? Which one? Dr. Gundry's olive oil. Oh my gosh, <laughs> yeah, the, the best there is. Okay, I know you know, but tell our audience, why the black pepper and turmeric together? Well, from the studies that I found that combining those two together, they have more powerful effects in the body. These are one of my favorite recipes. Mm -hmm. Sprinkled with broccoli sprouts. So I try and encourage everyone to sprinkle broccoli sprouts. And these are good cold as well. Yeah, they're cold yeah. right now. You can put them on a salad. Yep, you can wrap them up in a coconut wrap. So we could take this uh, for a tailgate party for game day yep. and fool everybody? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So this is an immune boosting turmeric black pepper tea. So this has lemon, ginger, turmeric, black pepper, and some garlic. And some garlic. Yeah, so nice anti-inflammatory. Okay. Very detoxifying. Did you, this is new, or did you have this, you know, during your treatment course? I didn't, I didn't really know about turmeric at that time. Uh, I did a lot of ginger though. Every day I had ginger, a lot of ginger. Talking about preventing cancer naturally or 
treating cancer with food gets a lot of critics going and particularly healthcare professionals and nutritionists. How do you, what do you say? Well, how do you deal with that? Yeah, um, <laughs> I mean, I'm very passionate about this subject and I, it's a personal story for me. So um, when I was thinking of my next book with my publisher, I was like, well, what I'm really passionate about is helping people with cancer. And I was like, well, I'm not an MD. I'm not even a you know certified dietitian and I'm blonde and young <laughs> so that doesn't really help my case to be real um so but i was like you know i just want to go for this so i i pitched it to my publisher and they were like yes we love it this is meaty this is good you can do it and at the time i had support from people in the industry that are helping a lot of people with cancer so i felt uh, more empowered and confident and then you know i wrote the book submitted it and then i was like oh actually i don't want to do this i changed my mind because the backlash is, is going to be crazy you know every time i post something about cancer i would get some really aggressive things like i hope you and your mom die of cancer like just really hurtful things but then i was like you know what i need to stop focusing on the critics and those people that are going to you know try and attack and focus on the people that i'm helping because when i think of them the people that have cancer and that there have been many um, case studies and I interview a lot of cancer survivors in the book and talk about specific foods for specific types of cancer. When I focus on that, that's what keeps me going. I think this, this actually works and this isn't rocket science. You know, food is medicine and this can work in conjunction with a treatment plan. So if someone can do chemo and also be healthy at the same time, there's no point doing chemo or surgery and eating a sloppy joe that the hospital gives you. It's just gonna make everything worse, so. Yeah, I think that's a great point. There are numerous studies that show certain supplementation, getting your gut microbiome as healthy as possible will either prevent or at least minimize the effects of chemotherapy on your gut, on your digestion, on your brain fog, and you talk about that in, in the book. Yeah. So at the very least, I mean, even in our cancer center in Palm Springs, there are graham crackers and saltines in the waiting room while you're waiting to go get your chemo treatment. And the head of our center is actually a big fan of, of mine and follows my program. And I'm always picking on him. I say, you know, what are you doing? And he says, well, they want that. And, you know, we're, we're, in, we're in business. And, uh, you know, they're, they're not, they'd eat this. So we just need them to have this, these kinds of options. Yeah. 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 Or have like a healthier cracker. Okay, well, so the critic will say, well, this is really expensive to do, and if you're on chemotherapy, you got cancer, you don't have time to do this. Um, that's five minutes? Yeah, five minutes, just throw it in. Tiger nut, monk fruit, chocolate chunks, vanilla, sea salt, done. So this is very time effective, but also I realize that we can't put a price on our health. You know, if you want to stay living, we have to invest in food, and maybe if we start investing more in organic foods, we'll spend less on other things that we don't really need. But also there's ways to shop more effectively. You know, I found a website that's like Amazon that you can buy all of these ingredients like tiger nut flour that's much cheaper than if you were to go to a health food store. So, you know, I'm all about supporting local health food stores for sure. But if you're on a budget, you know, shop online and get these things at a discounted price. Okay, so for those of tiger nuts, I wanna talk about tiger nuts. Um, for those of you who are listening, these tiger nuts that I have in my hand look like little almost dried berries, but they're actually a tuber and they're not a nut. They actually support indigenous Africans and having just come back from Ethiopia, where 85% of the population of 110 million people are subsistence farmers, you actually by eating these give support to people who really need it. But these guys actually uh, are tubers. They, are, they feed good gut bugs. They are one of the best foods for feeding gut buddies. And these are hard as a rock in this form. And maybe I can click them. So uh, having personal experience over the number of years, do not try to eat these things just like this. They are potentially tooth breaking. So how do we, how do we use them? How, how do we find them? Yeah, so they can be shocking to someone who just tries to eat them like this. So 
I would recommend getting the peeled tiger nuts and you can also get sliced tiger nuts also. But if you do get the whole tiger nuts, I'll soak them overnight and then you can eat them now they're nice and soft. They're also great on for a breakfast, but then also you can just buy the tiger nut flour. Or you can grind these up yourself in a food processor and make your own tiger nut flour. Um, the one that I use and Dr. Gundry uses, I believe, is yep. Organic Gemini. And you can get that. Well, I shop at vitacost.com. So, Good spot. Yeah. Good spot. So you can get it from there. Just type in tiger nuts and it'll come up. I also have a code if I can say that. It's, you sure can. It's Earth Diet. So you get an extra 10% off your entire order. So vitacost.com, type in tiger nuts and then put the code Earth Diet when you check out. Wow. That helps people who are really tight for money because I don't want people to have money hold them back from living a healthy life. Yeah, and if we, like you say, if we spent our money on food, we wouldn't have to spend our money on treatments like uh, people have to go through. Exactly. And people feel more alive, have more energy, and then they can do other more creative things that bring in more money. So it's like a whole cycle. And fun fact, if you get the sliced ones, you can actually use them like slivered almonds, and they make a very attractive addition to a salad. Yes, and also a dessert too. You can, you can roll the cookie dough in the sliced tiger nuts. Ooh, yeah, and okay. they look beautiful and fancy. But my favorite way to use tiger nuts, I would have to say overall number one, is making a tiger nut milk. So I'll do one cup of tiger nuts and the recipes in the book, one cup of tiger nuts to four cups of water and that's it. Blend it up and it comes out white and creamy and delicious. So since tiger nuts are naturally sweet, just like a sweet potato is, there's no need to add any extra sweetness it's just perfectly creamy and sweet and just so delicious and refreshing. And some amazing studies I found on tiger nuts is that when we consume more tiger nuts, it helps detox our liver and also protect our liver. So I include these studies in the book. I actually list tiger nuts as a number 10 top anti-cancer food in the book. So if someone is going through chemo, it would be really helpful if they're drinking tiger nut milk every day to help their liver. So ditch the cashew milk, ditch the oat milk. We're going on a tiger nut milk craze. Yeah, woo! All right, very <laughs> <Finally>. good, finally. <laughs> These guys need, uh, need recognition. Okay, so where do we find Cancer Free with food? So you can find it at Amazon, also Barnes & Noble, or any bookstore will also have it. It's a bestseller, number one on oncology on Amazon. It's a top 100 on Barnes & Noble, and also a top 100 on Amazon overall as well. So yeah, please get the book, enjoy it, and then share it with anyone that you know who has cancer or anyone who wants to prevent cancer. Well, thanks so much for joining us, and thank you. thank you for the great healthy food. See, you can have junk food that actually heals you rather than kills you. All right, so that's it for today. I'm Dr. Gundry, and we'll see you next week. Before you go, I just wanted to remind you that you can find the show on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Because I'm Dr. Gundry, and I'm always looking out for you.